All right, so today we're gonna be reviewing whatever this thing is. All right, so what's the deal with this thing? This thing is the EVGA PowerLink 41S or something like that. I don't know why they, I don't know why they chose 41. Essentially what this thing is, is this thing takes the 12 pin on the 3090 Ti on the side of the card there, takes that, converts it into four eight pins. Now, why would they even make this product? Is it, why is this better than a triple cable other than having an extra eight pin? Well, inside here are filtering capacitors, right? The idea being that it will smoothen out the voltage going into the graphics card before it actually reaches it, right? Um, input filtering, essentially. So would that make a difference or not? That's what we're gonna test today. Now this product is for the 3090 Ti only, and I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that it's completely useless because EVGA has done this before. This was the 2000 series one. Although this one had more of a functional design to it where uh, on the 2000 series card, this would kind of plug into the top because the eight pins were on the top, and then that would move the eight pins over to the side makes it for an overall cleaner aesthetic. There are capacitors in here too, but when I tested this way like a couple years back or whatever, um, it didn't do anything. And so this, but at least this one had a functional purpose, right? This one here on the other hand, doesn't make any sense at all because it would increase the length of the graphics card. And uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe if you're running a thousand watts through it, like maybe if you run a thousand watts through this thing, it's safer than running a thousand watts through three cables, maybe? Like an XOC thing possibly? Anyway, but that's not what it's advertised for. It's advertised as cleaning the signal up. I mean, yeah. So I wasn't even gonna buy this thing, but the marketing for this thing was so ridiculous that I had to get it for the lulls. Anyway, thanks to the supporters for buying this for me. All products on this channel are bought by supporters so that I can bring unbiased reviews to you. Um, usually I wouldn't bother with stuff like this, but uh, just, just gotta, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. I can't remember how much this thing costs now, but it was like 50 bucks after shipping, I believe. I can't remember now, but let's go find out what that $50 gets you if you are a 3090 Ti buyer, or if this thing was just a, uh, whale gotcha moment, right? Let's just milk those buyers for even more money with more useless shit. Let's go. All right, so how are we gonna do this here? So in this computer here, I'm running a 1000 watt, I think it's a Rosewill bronze power supply, some like new egg special. So this is like one of the worst power supplies that you could possibly buy, right? So if anything is gonna show us some kind of improvement it's going to be this power supply here okay so 390 ti evga etc so maybe i'm thinking let's run a few loops of time spy and then see what the max clocks are to start off okay we might actually have to lower the power limit here because the clock speed is not fluctuating at all maybe we'll do like 80 percent power limit and do this again there we go, that's much better. It's only fluctuating about 15 megahertz here, uh, one volt, but that should be good enough for the purposes of this test here. We'll do another loop with max voltage and max power, and then we'll test both. All right, we're just finishing up loop five here. When the screen goes black, let's press escape, and then let's see what the average clock was. So it looks like the max, 1935, 1950, 1920. So we'll say, yeah, 1950 max, 1935 average. Okay. Okay, so for this next test here, I'm going to move up the 1.1 volt slider, see where the maximum frequency is that it'll pass five loops. Then we'll install this thing and see if we can actually get any more frequency on our maximum. Okay, so it's actually getting quite hot here, but we managed to lock it at 22.05. It might even down clock to 21.90 if it goes up a little bit hotter. It's actually super hot in here right now, but yeah, 22.05. And then, but in the afterburner, it's actually set 
to 22.30, right? 22.35, yeah. So 22.35 in Afterburner, and then 22.05 in Time Spy after five loops, and that is without the power booster. So now let's go install this thing and see if it, I don't know, I don't know, see if it does anything. All right, I'm gonna hook up this RGB header here on the unit, and then I believe just kind of slot in. Wait for that. I'm trying to do this with one hand. It's really difficult. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, one, two screws. Okay, that's it. I mean, it's pretty solid. Like you, you would think it's flimsy, but it's not. It's actually like. Like, it's quite good. Like, I, like I, I'm not worried about this thing breaking off at all. Like, it's really good. So, um, yeah, I mean, it adds maybe another two inches to the length of the card. So, that might be a deal breaker for some people. But, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Let's just see if it actually performs better. The PowerLink 41S engaged. All right, we're just finishing up loop five here on the 80% power limit. It's the exact same. I mean, I'm not really sure what I was expecting there, but yeah, it's identical. So no dice on smoothing out the frequency with the power booster. So, I mean, I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but uh, it's, still, it's still always disappointing to know that something that you bought doesn't actually do anything whatsoever, right? So let's move this over to 2235. And then if I can pass this for five loops, I'll try and move it up one. There we go. And then we'll see if maximum frequency has changed at all. This one is the most likely to actually show any kind of gain here. Nope, it actually just crashed, which means the fact that I passed five loops before was just a fluke so it made it through two loops like this crashed which ultimately means well it didn't increase the frequency right so it does absolutely nothing i don't know yeah i don't know i don't know what the purpose of this product was it just makes your graphics card longer looks uglier like with four pins sticking out there and this was like the worst power supply that you could use. So it didn't even clean up the signal from a Rosewill 1000 watt bronze. So yeah, if you are a 3090 Ti owner, this is a hard pass for you. It does absolutely nothing. Zilch, zero balls. Well, that's pretty much it. I was gonna like take it apart and show you the capacitors, maybe do some B-roll, but this thing is so useless and disappointing that I kind of don't want to spend any more time on it. In my opinion, this thing is actually worse than stock because it extends the length of the card and it makes cable management even messier, right? So you're never going to pull more than like 450, 500 watts in a game anyway. So I, 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 I don't know what this is for. And you know what the real question is? They had to R&D this, right? Like, like they had to pay somebody like an engineer to R&D this thing, right? Even if you are a 3090 Ti buyer and you're just looking to waste some money, I am... Maybe go look for a custom sleeved 12 pin cable. That would look really nice. And then um, that would make your overall build look much cleaner than this thing. So anyway, guys, so yeah, does absolutely nothing. If you like the content, though, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you want me to test any more useless crap like this. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.